Hello, this is T Space Sneak, and basically, sorry, I have a few things open that you cannot see. Um, I am doing a little tutorial on how to draw in GIMP because someone suggested it, so that is what I am going to do. <coughs> All right. So what we're going to do here is create a new file. We're going to um, basically to do a we're doing a basic tutorial. The next tutorial will be slightly more advanced and so on and so on. Okay, so basically getting to know the basics, you need to open file new, then open a template which you can choose whatever you want. Um, you can also create your own which can either be this or this. This is uh, landscape and this is portrait. So what I usually do is portrait or landscape because you know drawing is easier at that. I always switch it to this one since it's already set for you. Now what I like to do is set my pen size when you have a tool options thing that comes up here like this. And uh, yours might all be in the same toolbox. I accidentally screwed up my toolbox, so um, I'm stuck with this. But <laughs> anyway, so um, with your toolbox here. You're going to take, uh, you know, the pen size, which should be here, and adjust it to whatever you like. I usually adjust to 5.12 because that's what works for me. See, and uh, to quickly, basically, to quickly delete something without having to go edit, undo, or erase it, you can click Control Z, and it's gone. So basically, what you want to do before you go and la 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 la, draw, 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 de -de draw, you're gonna want to create some new layers which is going to be three. Three layers is usually the kind of thing you want to do. So once you have three layers here, you can uh, start, you'll be on your top layer. So when you're on your top layer, you can basically draw the line or the outline of whatever it is you want to draw. What I'm going to draw is, um, since I have to get this done anyways, Right here, I made this adopt sheet for someone else for this scat and spiel cat, and nobody took two, so I'm gonna draw two to adopt it, and that is also gonna be my tutorial here. So we're gonna draw this little dinosaur guy. Oops, and that's how you're gonna learn how to do stuff. So basically what I usually do when I first draw a line is I zoom in to whatever I'm going to draw. So when you draw this line, it looks a lot smoother and you can also see the size when you zoom out. Also another thing about zooming to basically do it faster rather than opening this up again and doing all that, you can literally click control and zoom out and zoom in with the scroll on your mouse or whatever you use for a scroll. So I'm going to do that. And you can move your toolbox out of the way if it's in the way. And basically this one has a horn, I think. Yeah. So we're gonna draw a horn. This is really basic stuff that I'm doing right now, is drawing lines on the outside. And see, everyone has a different style, so I'm not gonna show you a tutorial exactly how to draw. It's just gonna, things you can do to draw easier without it screwing up all the time. Now, so if you find your lines are coming out squiggly, just zoom in more. And if it still comes out squiggly, which it clearly didn't, draw zoom in more. And it comes out nice and soft. So um, it's easier to know where you're drawing when you've already drawn something. So you might want to keep zoomed out if you're going to draw your very first line. Sometimes I do that, but not all the time. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm drawing point showing to the left because that's usually the easiest uh, way to draw for me. What It might be the uh, other way around for you, but uh, you know, that's how I draw. Right now we're drawing a skull, or a mask as some would say. And what we're going to draw here... Now here's another tip when you're drawing eyes, perhaps. You can draw any way you want. But uh, most of the time, it depends on it is, since this is a skull or a mask, it's just going to be the way it's supposed to be, which is curved like that. And from over here, we're going to draw a little bit to add some depth. I'm not very good with depth, so don't ask me to draw amazing depth. <laughs> and so, 
Basically, when here's another tip with GIMP. Don't color this all black if it's already black because then you're going to screw up the shading and everything else on the drawing. Since we're already drawing something right here, it's going to be the eye. Another thing is if you're not drawing an eye that's kind of like this, you're going to want to... Uh, what I usually do for eyes, I usually draw a little circle or whatever type of eye it is. Maybe it's a cat eye, which could look like that. Um, usually what I do is I draw a little circle for the pupil. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll draw and um, here's a tip don't if you're gonna draw a pupil and then something around it don't draw the color of the iris with black it doesn't look good actually don't even draw it on that layer just add it after that's why I'm not coloring this yet all right so I'm gonna continue with my drawing this is basically a dinosaur. It's a coelophysis. A lot of people get it confused with the raptor when it's not even part of the raptor family at all. Kind of makes me upset, but you know, I'm a dino nerd, so it doesn't matter. Sometimes it can be hard to draw a long stroke. You might have to redo it over a few times. That's exactly what I do. And if it doesn't look good when you zoom out, just redo it. And redo it. And redo it until you get it right. Yeah. It's tedious. So, yeah, this is really awkward and quiet. I'm gonna put on some music. <clears throat> Let's put on some music. The sound of all the sirens sing like fire. Any of you wanna know how to draw logs and stuff? You know, Say if we're gonna draw this dinosaur's paws here. Usually, just um, if you're if you're the kind of person that does an outline before you draw the um, before you draw in general, you basically um, draw like when you draw the claw stub, just don't even draw the claws. You have to draw stubs. Spikes actually, a lot of people have trouble with drawing spikes. It's actually really not that hard. You just have to do over and over these little tiny things. But I always start with big and then go smaller. That's how that line art came to be. Um, so here's our outline. That's all I need to know. Now, before I get along with everything else, you probably don't want to know what all these goals are. This here is cutting a shape square. This is cutting a shape circle. Okay, so good. This here is a lasso. I hope I did not pronounce that wrong because I'm kind of crazy. It's probably practically like freeform cutting, like you do in uh, MS Paint. This here is fuzzy select. So you select something and then you know, do something in it. Now, oh, sorry. Keep um, sorry, this is select the color, so all, I have selected everything in that color. So, <clears throat> uh, this here is basically the scissors, same thing as cut, like I said. Um, whoops, what did I do there? Eh. Sometimes uh, this program likes to, uh, when you select something, to stay selected, but some other things aren't like that, so... Foreground select? I honestly don't know what this does yet, so don't even ask me. Um... Hey, usually this is a path. Yet again, another thing I don't really know, but I'm pretty sure it's selecting a path for you using a line. Ah, this here is something great I like to do, because once I already get my colors, um, you know what? Never mind. I'll just show you that when we get there. Um, this here. Zoom, zoom out. Pretty easy. This is, uh, the measure. You measure basically what's around it. All that crud. I did it again. Alright, there we go. Look, I totally ruined something. I ruined a spike, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. This is a- oh, shiz. I went the wrong direction. This is select. 
basically moving anything. You can move the layer behind it or out of it, uh, you know, the basic. Now here, um, this is a line, honestly, this basically just aligns the layers and such, and cropping, you guys know what cropping is, I shouldn't have to explain that to you. Rotate is basically rotating the image, but, uh, you know, and basically this does everything. This scales it, you can, uh, make it bigger or smaller. This shears it, you can cut a certain bit off of it or whatever, this is perspective, it does, uh, changes, morphs the picture, and this flips, uh, basically flips it. So if you want it facing this way, it'll face that way. If you don't want it facing that way, you can face it this way. This way, this way, this way, this way. Okay, so, um, yeah, and you can, uh, cage transform, which I honestly don't know what that does either, because honestly, I don't need to use certain things. And, um, you know, this is adding font, of course, you write in it, all that. Okay, so, uh, this is the fill. It doesn't look good if you fill something unless it's, uh, unless you're creating the line. How do I explain this? Um, unless you're using the pencil. See, if you look really closely at the difference between the pencil and the actual line, it looks a lot different, right? That's because this doesn't have those micropixels. So, if you want to make a liner or something, I would suggest using this if you want to make it paint friendly and fill friendly. Or should I say? Um, but if you're making a drawing, it just looks so much better using the paintbrush instead of the pencil. Because the pencil, I mean, look at it. It just looks crude, you know what I mean? So, always use this one if you're going to make a drawing. Use this if you want to make a liner. This here is basically, uh, whoa, jeez. Oh, sorry. Scared the shit out of me. Um, this is basically making a uh, transform into the color, so if, say if you have a plain white color, it will just color on it, all that. Alright, so, uh, stamp, honestly I don't use this yet again. Um, heal, I don't use that either. I think these are for pictures, like, because it's kind of a Photoshop alternate, so, uh, it does all that sort of stuff that you can use in, uh, to do for a picture. Blur and sharpen, I will show you after once I get the image done, because you won't be able to see the difference between all of these here. And I'll also be using the smudge tool a lot, since I, I'll show you why. Basically, it's uh, another tool I never use because it's kind of blotchy, but if that's what you want to do. Oh, also, airbrush, it's just lighter, and it looks like an airbrush, so you know what I mean. It's just like different tools you would use for drawing. Alright, so now that I got that covered, you're probably wondering, you know, I want to say more. Ah, oh. well, um, I don't know how much time I just wasted on this video, but, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, probably end it here, and this is the first bit of the tutorial doing the outline and showing the tools. I will show you next time.